This writer goes down on paper and writes them down in the present tense as though you had already received them. But what I have found is that if you write it down, it records into your brain, and your chances are you'll remember. I earn X number of dollars in 2019. I am a self-made millionaire by January 1st, 2025. I weigh X number of pounds. I live in a 5,000 square foot house with a separate bedroom for each one of my children. In other words, write it down as though it were already a fact. You're reporting the fact. Your subconscious mind is marvelous for what it does. It thrives on the goals that you pronounce in the present tense. This is dynamism in your brain, where your brain knows that you're only earning a certain amount of money, but now you're saying, I earn this amount of money. Your brain knows that you're not a millionaire, but now you're saying, I am a millionaire. So, your brain goes to work to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Your brain starts to work 24 hours a day, and it gives you ideas. Because once you're clear about your goal, you start to do all kinds of things that you can do that you hadn't thought of doing, which moves you faster toward the goal and moves the goal toward you. You activate the magnetism, you start to attract into your life people and circumstances that help you achieve the goal. It's the most amazing thing, and it is true, and it has been true for thousands of years. It is a great secret of success. The first great principle of success in life is the principle of purpose and the establishment of a clear central purpose or goal in life. Mr. H. L. Hunt, the great oil billionaire who was a bankrupt cotton farmer in Arkansas at the age of 32 in the middle of the Depression and who, at the age of 56, was earning $3 million a day and, at the age of 76, shortly before he died, was earning $5 million a day, was on a television show. The moderator asked him, Mr. Hunt, you've been so successful in your life. Could you give our viewers some ideas on how they could be more successful too? He said, the only two things necessary for success, he said, the first thing is that you have to decide exactly what it is you want, he said, that's the starting point. Even if people do decide exactly what it is they want, he said the second thing is, you have to determine the price you're going to have to pay to get it and then resolve to pay that. Determine the price you're going to have to pay, establish a clear central purpose for your life, and it is the starting point of all great success. However, we're programmed for failure, and we continually seek the fast, easy way through life. The fast, easy way through life inevitably ends with failure and underachievement. As soon as you determine a goal, something that you really, really want, you override your failure mechanism and begin freeing yourself from the gravitational pull of the E factor. Your brain has the same mechanism that is in the brain of the homing pigeon. When you program a goal into your brain, you immediately set up a type of vibration that goes out from you and radiates out from you, beginning to attract into your life the people, circumstances, and opportunities that enable you to accomplish it. But if you do not have a clear goal or set of goals, and if you do not have plans to work toward those goals, then this mechanism doesn't work at all. It lays dormant within your brain. An average person with average talents and abilities and average education can outstrip the most brilliant genius in our society if that average person has clear, focused goals, and if the genius does not. So, this is critical. That's why you see men and women who start from virtually nothing, and they make wonderful progress in their lives. Almost invariably, you see it starts with a goal. Some people don't set a goal until they're 30, some until they're 40, some until they're 50. Some people never do. But it's important to understand this. Without goals, you are doomed forever to work for people who do. Making decisions and setting goals is hard work. That's why only winners have goals. Losers are lazy. They won't take the time and effort to think through what they really want and then make plans for its accomplishment. Now, what do you want? Have you ever decided exactly what you want? Remember, you can have anything you want if you can clearly define it. But you can't hit a target that you can't see. Where do you want to be in one, two, three, four, five years? Or where do you want to be next year, and the year after, and the year after? What sort of progress do you want to make? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have? What level of health do you want to have? What kind of relationships do you want most of all? How badly do you want them? If you want it badly enough and are willing to pay the price, if you want it badly enough and are willing to pay the price, now, the rules regarding the price of success are simple. There are just two of them. Number one is you always have to pay the full price for success, and number two is you always have to pay in advance. Now, here are some key points on goals, and please remember these. The first key point is that your ability to set goals and to transfer their accomplishment is the master skill of success. Setting goals is hard. Setting goals requires delaying gratification. Setting goals means taking some time aside and sitting down and really thinking through what it is you want in each area of your life. Number two, your goals must be congruent with your basic values. What are your basic values in life? What do you live for? What would you fight for? What would you sacrifice for? 
What would you die for? What are the most important things to you in life? And are your goals or your daily activities congruent with those values? Sometimes I'd be in a job that I hated, and yet everybody around me thought it was a great job. And the reason for that, as I learned, is that for them and their values, it was the ideal job. But for me, and in many cases for you and your values, it was the wrong job. Number three, your goals must be in writing. You should describe them in clear, specific, vivid language in every detail, as though you're ordering something to be manufactured for you on the other side of the country. Writing down your goals programs them into the subconscious mind. If you cannot write your goals down clearly and describe them, it means one of two things, either you don't know what they are, or you are not committed to accomplishing them. Sit down and rewrite your major goals. Write them down briefly and write them down as though they were already accomplished. I earn $30,000 a year. I weigh 175 pounds. I am an excellent salesperson, or whatever your goal or objective is. Write it out in the present tense, as though it's already accomplished. And every time you write it down, you reprogram it into the subconscious mind. If you will do that for the next 30 days, you will make more progress in the next 30 days than you made in the last six months. You will be astonished. The reason why this works is that every time you write it down, you increase the intensity of the vibration going out of your mind into the world, and this law of attraction will then attract back into your life people and circumstances that will assist you in accomplishing those goals. Fourth point, in goal setting, you must have a major definite purpose, one goal that is more important than any other. You can have many different goals, but you must have one goal which is number one. There is a line in the Bible that says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And what it means is if you try to do two things at once or you have two goals with equal priority, you'll end up doing neither and doing neither of them very well. Whichever goal would have the greatest positive impact on every other area of your life, set that as your major definite purpose. Remember, your major definite purpose must be measurable. You can have a variety of different goals, but your major definite purpose, your number one goal, must be measurable. For instance, you could have a goal to be happy, but that couldn't be your major definite purpose. You could have a goal for weight loss, and that's a measurable goal. You can have a goal for income increase, and that is a measurable goal. So, make sure your goals are measurable. Make sure your goals are challenging and believable and achievable. Make sure that your goals are just slightly beyond anything that you've done before, especially your major definite purpose. But each of your goals should be something beyond anything you've accomplished. Finally, under number four, you must know why you want to achieve your goal. If there's one or two reasons for achieving a goal, you'll have a little bit of motivation. If you have five or ten reasons, you'll have more motivation. But if you have fifty reasons for achieving a particular goal, you'll have so much motivation that nothing will be able to stop you. Okay, point number five. If you don't have a major definite purpose, make it your number one goal to find your major definite purpose. As a matter of fact, 95% of the population has the slightest idea what the central purpose is of their lives. So, if you start off and you don't have a major definite purpose, don't worry about it. It means that you're exactly the same as everybody else. But set it as your major goal to find it and keep persisting, keep thinking, keep reflecting, keep reviewing what it is that could be your major definite purpose. I promise you will find it, and when you find it, it's like your whole life goes into overdrive. Make it the most important single goal of your life to find out what it is that you should be doing. Point number six, make detailed plans to achieve your goals and break your plans down into monthly, weekly, and daily activities. Always define your goals in terms of the activities you will have to engage in to achieve them. Do something extra every day to move you towards your most important goals. Number seven, remember this, the more you practice setting clear goals, the better you get. When you become an expert at setting goals and making plans, your success is assured. Even if you are a brilliant human being, extremely intelligent, very capable, and talented, without a goal, you will not be able to construct a great life. As I said before, you will have to spend the rest of your life working for people who have clear, specific goals and clear blueprints for those. Now, the psychology of goal setting requires clear, specific goals keenly desired because they give power, purpose, and direction to your life. Thinking about your goals, visualizing them as though they already existed, repeating and reaffirming them to yourself builds the drive, commitment, and momentum that moves you out of the comfort zone. Here's a good goal for you or a good affirmation. If you repeat over and over again, I am the best. I am the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. And visualize yourself as the very best in your field. When you repeat this over and over again, you set up a field of vibration, and you drive the command down into the subconscious mind. As you know, the subconscious then goes to work to make all of your words and actions and reactions fit a pattern consistent with those intensely desired goals. 
Once you believe that you are capable of accomplishing that, nothing in the world can stop you. Remember, goal-centered living is a source of energy and enthusiasm. It's not possible to be motivated without goals. When there's something that you want badly enough, you will have the excitement, the motivation, the enthusiasm, and the energy that will drive you toward accomplishing every step you take towards your goal. Gives you a feeling of accomplishment, that winning feeling, that boosts your self-esteem and improves your performance. Each time your self-esteem goes up and you like yourself better, you feel energy and enthusiasm that causes you to try more things, to try other things, to hurl yourself into achieving more of the goals that are possible for you. Goals are the fuel in the furnace of achievement. The more goals you have, the more excited you are about life, the more progress you make. In my estimation, 80 to 90% of the people who are in hospitals and clinics in America are there because they have no sense of meaning and purpose in life. In my estimation, most of the unhappiness in our society comes from people who do not know where they're going. Because they lack that sense of inner worth, that sense of central purpose, they become angry and frustrated, and alienated and hostile, and they take it out in drugs and alcohol and negativity, and so on, and so on. As soon as you begin setting worthwhile goals and working toward them, you feel positive, happy, and in control of your life. We know that we only feel positive about ourselves to the degree to which we feel we are in control of our own lives, and that we feel negative about ourselves to the degree to which we feel we are out of control. The fact that your conscious mind can only hold one thought at a time, positive or negative, and if you think about your goals, you can't think about something negative simultaneously because it's pretty hard to worry when you're busy working towards something that's important to you. Remember, it takes mental effort and self-discipline to keep your mind on your goals. But if you force yourself to think only about what you want for just 21 days, the same period of time that it takes for a chicken to hatch an egg, if you force yourself to think about it for only 21 days, you will lay down a new positive habit pattern that will stay with you throughout the rest of your life. Well, what have we learned? Number one, and we've beaten this to death. Setting clear, specific goals, writing them down, and making step-by-step -step plans for their accomplishment is essential to your success. This is hard work, which is why losers don't do it. Instead, they drift aimlessly, confused and unhappy. You must discipline yourself to be intensely goal-oriented if you want to be successful. Success is tons of discipline. Number two, decisiveness. Deciding exactly what it is you want in life is the starting point of all achievement. The positive habit of decisiveness gives courage, clarity, and force to your personality. Number three, self-esteem, the key to success and peak performance, comes from setting goals consistent with your values. That winning feeling, which comes from making measurable progress toward goals that are important to you. Number four, your subconscious mind is activated by goals in the form of clear mental pictures and positive affirmations. Visualize your ideal goal, complete in every detail. See it as though it existed already. Speak about your goal to yourself in positive, affirmative language. I earn $30,000 per annum. I can do it. I feel terrific. I am excellent at my work. Say this over and over again. Number five, read and review your goals and plans every day. Take 30 minutes each day to think and reflect upon your goals, always seeking newer, better, more creative ways of achieving them. In fact, you will find that the 30 minutes that you take at the beginning of each day to think about your goals, to reflect on what you're doing and how you could do it better, to revise your goals to fit in with new information, those 30 minutes will be the most valuable you ever spent. All great achievers, and in almost all the biographies and autobiographies you'll ever read, you'll find that people begin to become great when they start spending time by themselves each day thinking about who they are. Remember, nothing succeeds like success. We all have fears of failure. We're all afraid of risk and loss. But we have to make a habit of confronting those fears of failure and moving forward. That is why successful people are those who make a habit of success. They start from the same background of limitation and underachievement that everybody else starts from. But then they make a habit of succeeding. This is the key. Learn to succeed by succeeding and lay down a habit of success. This can only be accomplished by achieving challenging worthwhile goals. Remember to write your goals down, organize them in order of priority, select your major definite purpose, make a plan for its accomplishment, define the plan in terms of activities, and get to work right today. Do something extra every day to move you towards your goal, and your success is virtually assured.
Hello, Time Conscious friends. Today we embark on a journey to reclaim one of our most precious resources, time. In a world where distractions abound and demands on our attention seem endless, it's all too easy to fall into the trap of wasting precious moments on activities that do not serve our goals or nourish our souls. But fear not for today. We will draw upon the wisdom of some of the world's most successful individuals to uncover the most powerful tips for maximizing our time and living with purpose and intention. Time is the great equalizer. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Yet, how we choose to spend those hours can make all the difference in our personal and professional lives. From visionary entrepreneurs and innovative thinkers to resilient leaders and mindful creators, the individuals whose insights we will explore today have mastered the art of time management and productivity, achieving remarkable success in their chosen fields. As we journey together through their life tips and strategies, I invite you to reflect on your own relationship with time. Are you making the most of each precious moment? Or are you allowing distractions and inefficiencies to steal your time and energy? What are the habits and behaviors that are holding you back from reaching your full potential? And how can you reclaim control over your time and your life? With each tip shared today, I encourage you to approach it with an open mind and a willingness to experiment. Remember, the path to mastery is paved with small consistent actions taken day after day. By implementing even one powerful life tip into your daily routine, you can begin to unlock new levels of productivity, fulfillment, and success. So without further ado, let us dive into the most powerful life tips from successful people and reclaim our time with purpose and intention. Are you ready to stop wasting your time and start living your best life? Let's begin. The only thing standing between your incredible abilities and yourself is fear. The good news is that you have extraordinary potential for triumph and personal fulfillment, as well as for achieving prosperity. Since you have more talent and natural ability than you could use in a thousand lifetimes, as Bruce Barton said, only those who dare to believe that something inside them is superior to circumstances have achieved splendid goals. I will teach you how to move from the fear zone to a fear-free zone. In the next few minutes of this video, you will learn how to develop self-confidence, courage, and unwavering determination in every area of your life. You will face the greatest challenges and opportunities of your daily life without any fear and be convinced of your ability to achieve everything you set out to do. Step into the fear-free zone. For over 25 years, Brian Tracy, I have studied successful women and men, seeking the characteristics and qualities they all have in common that have allowed them to achieve much more than the average person. I have read countless books, articles, and research studies on success. And I have come to the conclusion that the fundamental quality for success in every walk of life is the confidence each person has in themselves. Every dreamer who has ever achieved something out of the ordinary has had greater self-confidence than people with average results. When you believe in yourself so much that you know you have the ability to achieve almost anything you truly want, your future will be limitless. Here's an important question. What would you do differently if you were guaranteed success in any endeavor? What if a higher power granted you the power to reach the goal you set for yourself. In other words, what if you were not afraid of anyone or anything and felt completely free to act in any area that would benefit you? As we've just heard, the quality of unwavering self-confidence holds immense power to shape your world and unlock untapped potential. Yet, for many, cultivating this trait is no easy feat. Indeed, self-confidence is a rare commodity in today's world, with many individuals grappling with feelings of doubt, insecurity, and fear. As psychologist Abraham Maslow astutely observed, the history of humanity is replete with instances of individuals undervaluing themselves and succumbing to the limitations imposed by their own self-doubt. But here's the remarkable truth. Self-confidence is not an innate trait reserved for the lucky few. It is a mental quality that can be cultivated and strengthened through deliberate effort and practice. While it's true that everyone possesses varying levels of self-confidence, the key lies in harnessing that potential and systematically enhancing it over time. The journey towards greater self-confidence begins with a willingness to confront and overcome the fears and insecurities that hold us back. As I often say, everything we do is driven by either fear or desire. And fear, particularly fear of the unknown, remains one of the greatest obstacles to cultivating unwavering self-confidence. But fear not, 
for the path to self-confidence is within your reach. By setting your mind to the task and committing to a process of systematic self-improvement, you can elevate yourself to new heights of confidence and self-assurance in any area of your life. So as we continue our exploration of self-confidence and its transformative power, I encourage you to reflect on your own journey and identify areas where you can begin to cultivate greater confidence and belief in yourself. With dedication, persistence, and a willingness to confront your fears head on, you have the power to rewrite the story of your life and unleash your true potential. Fear holds us back more than any other factor. Fear of all kinds works on us unconsciously to underestimate and sabotage our best intentions and our greatest hopes. In fact, as you listen to these words, you are probably thinking of a fear that is holding you back in some way. No matter what you do, fear rears its ugly head and tries to trip you up. Sometimes fear will appear consciously in the form of rationalizations and excuses that you will use to sabotage yourself and hold yourself back. At other times you will see yourself avoiding setting goals, saying that I already know what my goals are, I don't need to write them down. Your subconscious will tell you that if you don't set clear goals, you won't go through the experience of failing. This is just another way of saying that you don't really believe in your ability to improve in what you are doing. Now, often fear will show up as your procrastination in writing your goals. You'll decide to write them all down over the weekend, during your summer vacation, when you can dedicate a couple of hours or at some undefined point in the future. Then, like 97% or more of adults, you'll never do it. You'll start rationalizing and say, well, considering my situation, it's probably not going to make any difference anyway. Orson Sweat Martin said, There can be no great value where there is no confidence or security. For half the triumph in battle lies in the conviction that we can accomplish what we undertake. If fear is the worst enemy of self-confidence, then the worst enemy of human triumph is the comfort zone. Psychologists have determined that each of us has a natural tendency to gravitate towards a zone of performance and behavior where we are comfortable, one that is easy and unchallenging, and then we stay there. We stop trying, we relax day by day. We develop habits that lead us to poor performance and failure. We settle for much less than we are actually capable of. We engage in social media, watch television, listen to music, socialize, and generally waste time, convincing ourselves from time to time that this is the best we can do. We build the confidence to tackle higher goals by using our energies to accomplish smaller goals. We build our confidence as we progress until we reach the point where there is nothing we cannot undertake. Indeed, the habit of setting and achieving higher goals is absolutely indispensable for the development of higher levels of confidence and personal effort. Only you can truly believe in yourself when you undoubtedly know that you have the ability to do what you set out to do. True self-confidence does not come from having good wishes or positive hopes or positive thoughts, but from being positive based on the fact that you have proven to yourself time and time again that you have what it takes to go from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. Self-confidence is a state of mind. It is an attitude, and as such, it is more important than facts. However, it must be based on facts to be the kind of self-confidence you can rely on in a decisive moment. Your job is to do whatever it takes to convince yourself in your heart that you are completely unstoppable in achieving what you set out to do. William James said, Compared to what we should be, we are only half awake. We are only using a small part of our physical and mental resources. Broadly speaking, the human individual lives very much within his limits. He possesses powers of various kinds that he regularly does not use. The founder of Success Magazine, Orson Sweat Martin, stated, there are powers within you that, if you could discover and use, would make you everything you ever dreamed or imagined you would be. In a five-year study on leaders presented in his book Leaders, Warren Bennis found that each of them consciously avoids the comfort zone by continuously setting higher goals. They never allow themselves to become complacent. They live broadly, always striving to be and do more, to develop strong confidence. You need to see yourself and think of yourself as a leader and do what leaders do. You need to stretch yourself to the outer limits of your potential. Set goals that bring out the best in you. Work towards goals that make you feel a sense of mastery and peak performance. And it all starts with a notebook, a pen, and you not imagining limits. The starting point for setting goals is to abandon all mental limitations and let your mind wander freely through an entire universe of possibilities. 
Your primary task initially is to allow yourself to dream big and determine exactly what you want to get out of life in every area and dimension. Decide what is right before deciding what is possible. Imagine that you can be, have, or do literally everything you actually want. As long as you know exactly what it is. First make your dream list. Imagine for a moment that you have no limitations of time, money, knowledge, contacts, experience, or education. Imagine that any goal you write down is possible for you. Remember that any goal you can define clearly and crystallize on paper is possible. As long as you desire it for long enough and with enough intensity. And if you're willing to make the efforts and sacrifices necessary, there are no unrealistic goals, only unrealistic timelines. The act of writing down your goal sets the entire universe in motion in your favor and activates all mental laws to assist you. In fact, many people have experienced writing a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting it away, and not looking at it again until the end of the year, only to discover that they achieved almost 80% of those goals, sometimes in the most incredible ways. The act of writing down big and challenging goals makes three things happen. First, your self-concept improves and your confidence immediately increases. The act of setting goals requires confidence and builds confidence simultaneously. Having the courage to write down what you truly want enhances your self-image and boosts your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, you tap into your mental and emotional powers. Setting goals triggers an explosion of physical and mental energy. Your heart and breathing rates increase. The act of setting goals is exciting in itself. It sounds a bit cheesy, but someone once said, feeling apathetic? Make a list. It's true. It's like stepping on the accelerator of your own physical and mental potential. If you do it every day, the results will be tremendous. Third, committing to paper. Having committed your goal to paper dramatically increases the odds of achieving it. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot clearly write down a goal on paper, not on a computer screen, without simultaneously having the ability to fulfill it in some way. The most important question is how much you want it. There are several mental exercises to determine your goals. First, imagine you've just won a million dollars in cash, and you can do or have whatever you want with the money. What is the first thing you would do? Where would you go? What changes would you make in your life if you had absolute financial freedom? What would you do differently from what you're doing now? Second, describe your ideal lifestyle. Imagine you could live your ideal of the perfect life. Where in the country would you choose to live? What kind of company would you want to work for or start and run on your own? What kind of house and car would you want? How would you like to spend your time in your life? What kind of relationships would you want? Third, ask yourself what you would do if you knew today that you only had six months left to live. If you had no limitations, how would you spend these last six months? It's another way of asking what's really important to you. Who would you like to spend time with? What would you like to accomplish? What would you like to leave behind? In other words, what do you really value? What are the things that truly give meaning and purpose to your life? Fourth, make a list of your concerns and problems and write down a goal that is the perfect solution to each of those difficulties. If money is a concern, write down a goal that clearly defines how much you want to earn, how much you want to save, and what you want to achieve financially in the next three to five years. Jeff, think about your family and relationships. Describe the perfect situation among the important people in your life and set a series of goals to achieve that situation. Six, assess your health. Describe what perfect physical and mental health means to you and design your plan to achieve those levels. Seventh, define the type of person you would like to become both personally and professionally. Then, establish a personal and professional development plan that allows you to learn, grow, and become the person you aspire to be. Remember what I said before. To have something, you must first be something. The importance of goals. The reason why goals are so important in building self-confidence is because the act itself of setting a big goal in your life activates all mental laws in your favor. It's as if all the switches are turned on in your engine of achievement and the afterburners of your potential are ignited. Clear goals free you from the law of accident. That is, the tendency of things to happen randomly and unpredictably. Goals give you a clear sense of direction and the knowledge that your life is full of self-determination. Goals give you a sense of purpose and focus. They make you feel that everything that happens to you is part of an organized plan. 
that is leading you step by step toward the fulfillment of your highest ideals. Your ability to set goals and make plans for their accomplishment is the ultimate skill of triumph, without which very little is possible. The habit of setting goals regularly and achieving them is almost more important than any other skill you can ever learn. And finally, I want to share this story with you. I had a friend who smoked for 30 years and said he couldn't quit smoking because it was a deeply ingrained habit that dated back to the early days of his adulthood. One day, he felt chest pains and went to see his doctor who ordered a series of tests. When the results came back, the doctor made my friend sit down and told him he had a serious heart problem and that if he continued smoking, he would be dead in six months. Samuel Johnson said, When a man knows he is to be hanged in a fortnight, concentrates his mind wonderfully. The idea of dying was so emotionally charged for my friend that he took out his cigarettes, threw them in the trash, and never touched one again. On the positive side, if you were completely convinced that you were destined for great success and that there would be nothing in the world that could prevent you from achieving great things while sincerely dedicating yourself to every activity and persisting until you succeed, you would become an irresistible force of nature. The depth of your thinking and the strength of your conviction would dramatically increase the power of your personality. If you truly believed in your ability to achieve great triumphs, you would become unstoppable. The four C's of inner confidence. You can develop this kind of belief, this inner confidence, by developing what I call the four C's. First, clarity. Decide exactly what you want to achieve and what kind of person you want to become. Second conviction, develop the strong belief that you can do whatever you set out to do. Third, commitment. Decide to do whatever it takes. Develop the willingness to pay the price in advance for any triumph you desire. Fourth, consistency. Decide to work on your goals every day, morning, noon, and night until you have achieved them. When you back your goals and actions with clarity, conviction, commitment, and consistency, you are on your way to developing the kind of confidence that will make everything possible for you. And as we bring our exploration of time management and productivity to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the invaluable insights and wisdom shared today. The tips and strategies we've uncovered from some of the world's most successful individuals serve as a roadmap to reclaiming control over our time and living with greater purpose and intention. From prioritizing tasks and eliminating distractions to cultivating mindfulness and embracing self-care, each piece of advice offers a powerful reminder of the transformative potential that lies within our grasp. But let us not simply marvel at the wisdom of others. Let us take action. Let us commit to implementing these life-changing tips into our daily routines one step at a time. For it is through consistent effort and intentional action that we will truly unlock the full potential of our time and our life. As you reflect on the lessons learned today, I encourage you to identify one key takeaway. A single tip or strategy that resonates deeply with you and holds the power to catalyze positive change in your life. Make a commitment to incorporate this insight into your daily routine and watch as it transforms your productivity, happiness, and overall well-being. Remember, time is our most precious resource and how we choose to spend it shapes the course of our lives. By honoring our time and using it wisely, we can create a future filled with success, fulfillment, and abundance. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery and growth. May the wisdom shared today serve as a guiding light on your path to greater productivity and purpose. And may you always remember the power to stop wasting your time and start living your best life lies within you. Seize it with courage, intention, and unwavering determination. Until we meet again, make every moment count. The most important thing you do for your success is to take control of the suggestive elements in your environment. Be sure that what you are seeing and listening to is consistent with the goals that you want to achieve. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. The average person drives 12,000 to 25,000 miles per year, which works out to between 500 and 1,000 hours per year that the average person spends in his or her car. You can become an expert in your field by simply listening to educational audio programs as you drive from place to place. 
Attend seminars given by experts in your field, take additional courses and learn everything you possibly can learn from the experts. Ask them questions, write them letters, read their books, read their articles, and listen to people with proven track records in the area in which you want to be successful. It can save you years of work and thousands and thousands of dollars. Have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, you've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true. Then you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers of all of history have been dreamers. They've been people with dreams, they've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. In the book of Solomon it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And the metaphysical meaning of that is that where people lack vision, they perish inside because they lose the excitement and the thrill of life. And what most people do, because of negative experiences, because of fear of failure and so on, is they, if they have a vision at all, they tone it down so it's so small and so so safe that it doesn't turn them on, it doesn't excite them, and they wonder why life isn't exciting. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision. And even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience at one time when we were small. We had a vision of growing up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. As we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. Wow. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on, they don't fill us with enthusiasm. So, dream big dreams if you like and focus on results, not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are results-oriented. All losers, underachievers, tend to be activity-oriented. And in activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do. But they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And many of us work very, very hard to do, very efficiently, what need not be done at all. Anybody who's ever had employees will tell you that every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So, focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself when in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs. Well, what I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? So I'm going to give you a simple word that you can use for the rest of your career, which will double your income. And the word is, how? From now on, Whenever you have a goal, the only question you ask is, how? Whenever you have a problem to solve, the only question you ask is, how? If you have an obstacle to overcome, the only question you ask is, how? Now, the wonderful thing about the word how is that it triggers ideas. And the ideas are all for actions that you can take immediately. And when you take those ideas, you start to get feedback, which enables you to correct your course and take even better steps to achieve your goals. So the average person, when they have a problem, complains and blames other people about the problem. Top people, when they have a problem or goal, they simply say, how could I achieve this goal? And they try this and they try that and they try something else. But it never occurs to them that they will not eventually be successful. So they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. The key to success is, first of all, 
understanding. And understanding is you. As understanding is understanding yourself and understanding your world. And that takes some time. It takes some study. And the second is effort. You have to work. You have to be willing to make the efforts necessary. When I began to study Spansky and Gorchev many years ago, they called it the work. And there's always work that you have to do. If you want to become physically fit, if you want to lose weight, there's a lot of work that you have to do. Unfortunately, most people, the bottom 80% of people, are lazy. Actually, there are three types of lazy. They're lazy, very lazy, and bone lazy. And one of the greatest problems we have in our society today is lazy people who want the rewards that hardworking people get. They call the lazy people the average person. They call the successful people the millionaires and billionaires without realizing that all of those people started with nothing. Many of them were poor. Many of them were poor. Many of them were immigrants. And it took them 20 to 30 years to become financially successful. There was a politician who ran for the presidency some years ago and he said, those who've been lucky at the gaming tables of life should be forced to share their winnings with those who have not been as fortunate. Uh, that's the mindset. In other words, if you're successful, it's just luck, you know. So therefore, you don't really deserve it. So it should be taken from you and given to others. The fact is that it takes tremendous effort for you and I to achieve any kind of success. But the fact is that there are no obstacles standing between you and any goal that you can set for yourself. You just have to learn how to do it. Every single person who is successful today was once a failure. Everyone in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%. And they set very clear goals and they learned specific things and they did things differently from the average person. And their life took off like that Mercedes. Ben's touching on the gas pedal. Their lives changed. So sometimes the absence of one piece of knowledge can hold you back for years. And I say never allow yourself to be held back because of the absence of a piece of knowledge or skill. All business skills are learnable. All money-making skills are learnable. All success skills are learnable. Everybody who knows them now at one time did not know them at all. And so you can learn anything you need to learn. Here's what we have found with regard to business. All business skills are learnable. You can learn any business skill that can help you to increase your earning ability. If you're in sales, you can learn any sales skill. If you want to earn money or make money, you can learn any money-making skill. All business skills are learnable skills. Now, you may not be able to play a violin like a great violinist or be a great athlete or a great athlete or a great artist because those are special skills. But in terms of business, you can learn any business skill because every person who has a business skill today at one time did not have that skill. And then they said that skill would help me. So they studied and practiced. And they took courses and they became good in that skill. I had a very poor education. So I thought other people were smarter than me. And if other people are smarter than you, it means that you are dumber than they are. And then I thought, well, if they're smarter than me, then they're worth more than I am. But if other people are worth more, then you must be worth less. Now, the feeling of being worthless is the biggest single problem in the world today. The feeling of being not very valuable and not very important, which leads to low self-esteem, negativity, anger, and depression. It leads to giving up, not even trying. It's the biggest problem in the world today. And high self-esteem, Confidence in yourself is the greatest blessing. But here's what I found. Nobody is smarter than you. Nobody's better than you. Some people have different talents and abilities, but talents and abilities. But talents and abilities are spread quite evenly. So you have more talent and ability than you could use in 100 lifetimes. The essence of all human wisdom is self-knowledge, and self-knowledge and self-understanding is to understand who you are why you think and feel the way you do. Because that foundation is called interpersonal intelligence. It's been identified at Harvard as one of the foundation intelligences of great success in life. Really understanding yourself, understanding your strengths and weaknesses. 
you'll find that superior people are very honest about themselves. They know that they're not good at certain things, and they're not defensive, and they're not defensive, and they're better at other things, and they're quite proud of it. If you look at all spiritual doctrines, all religion, all meditation, all philosophy, all great thought and all of history, it is to bring people to the point of thinking where they enjoy complete peace of mind. The rule is that if you set peace of mind as your highest goal, you'll probably never make another mistake. If you set peace of mind as your highest goal, everything else will fall into place. And if you achieve everything else in the world, but you do not achieve your own peace of mind, you will consider yourself a failure. You'll be unhappy, you'll be frustrated, you'll be irritated, you'll be irritated, you'll be angry, and so on. So peace of mind is the critical thing. And so you have to keep asking yourself, what are the things that occur that give me peace of mind? When do I enjoy the highest level of peace of mind? And when you start, when you have no fear and no negative emotions, your mind is like a vacuum. What flows in is complete peace. When you have solved all your problems but everything is fine, you just feel completely at peace. And those are what are called the peak experiences of your life. Those are when you are the happiest of all. And this is not something that occurs accidentally. You walk along and you trip over some peace of mind and pick it up and put it in your pocket. You have to deliberately design your life so that you feel a great sense of peace. And of course, an extension of that is happiness. Aristotle said the ultimate aim of all human behavior is to be happy, just to achieve your own happiness. When Ayn Rand, a renowned materialist, said many years ago, she said the ultimate measure of how well you're doing as a human being is how genuinely happy you are. And if you can accomplish everything else in the world, but you're not a happy person and you don't enjoy inner peace, well then, to that degree you fail. You read these stories of people who are extremely successful, make an enormous amount of money, they snort coke, they drink themselves into oblivion, they go on tours around the country like Charlie Sheen, and then some of them go home and shoot themselves. And they've got all this money and all this fame and all this glory, but they have no sense of inner peace. So we have this little diagram here, internal versus external locus of control. This is what psychologists use. They say you have an internal locus of control here where you are happy and then you have a scale and you have an external locus of control. The internal locus of control is where you feel that you're in charge of your own life. You make your own decisions. Americans in general, by the way, have a much higher sense of inner control than most countries in the world. Europeans, 58% of the Germans, for example, in highly structured economies believe that they have little or no control over their future. A person with an internal locus of control says, I make my own decisions. I am where I am, and what I am, and what I am, and what I am because of myself. I'm in charge of my life. A person with an external locus of control feels that other people are in charge of their life, their boss, their bills, and so on. Now you are here and you are moving in one direction or another with every decision that you make. The good news is that when you develop an internal locus of control, you feel really happy and strong, and you're much more positive and creative. And that's the goal that we're aiming for. The people with a high internal locus of control feel really good about themselves. They feel powerful. They feel empowered. They feel strong. Here's an interesting point. You can never give away control except to other people. You can give away your control to other people, but you still remain responsible. So control begins with your thoughts, and your thoughts determine your feelings, and your feelings, and your feelings then determine your actions. For the goals and ideals give you a sense of meaning and purpose. They make you wake up in the morning, and you're excited. You can hardly get going. There are a lot of people who love to sleep because they've got no reason to get up. People who are doing something and achieving something that's important, they look upon sleep as an irritation. It's something you have to do so that you're fully refreshed. But you do it as quickly as possible so you can get back to doing the stuff that makes you happy. It gives you peace of mind, fills your financial coffers, and so on. There are several core areas that you must continually evaluate and assess. Number one is, what are your core competencies? What are you good at? Each individual or business 
starts off with a set of core skills or competencies that enable them to produce a product or service that the market wants, needs, and is willing to pay for. Each employee starts off with core competencies that enable them to make a contribution. Each company starts off with core competencies that enable them to survive and thrive in a competitive business market. The first question you must ask is, what is your company especially good at? What does your company do in an exceptional fashion? What are the special talents and skills and abilities of the people in your company that enable you to produce your products or services in a superior fashion? And remember, whatever got you to where you're at today is not enough to get you any further. If you're not continually upgrading your knowledge and skills in your core areas, you're actually falling behind. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Now, here's another question with regard to core capabilities. What are you personally very good at doing? Look upon yourself as a bundle of resources that could do a variety of things. What are your special, unique, individual talents and skills that enable you to do an excellent job and achieve a worthwhile result? Again, you must be continually adding to your skill base and upgrading your existing skills just to stay even in the current market. What additional competencies will you need as a business and as an individual in the future? What are the trends in your industry? What is it that customers will be wanting one year from today and what competencies will you have to develop in order to serve your customers at the highest possible level one year from today? Spiritual development and spiritual understanding have been the goals of great minds throughout all of human history. In every culture, society, and civilization, spiritual traditions have emerged and developed spontaneously, often many thousands of miles apart. This seems to be within each person a desire to connect with something higher and greater than themselves. This inner drive seems to arise naturally and normally, often without any guidance or instruction. The great mystics and spiritual teachers of human history are those who have emerged to teach people how they can best satisfy this spiritual craving. The whole issue of spiritual development is complex and controversial. Each person who believes in a faith or a denomination is usually convinced that his or her ideas about God or a higher power are correct, and all others are wrong or misguided to some degree. The most terrible wars in human history have been religious wars fought over small differences in dogma, doctrine, or interpretation. Since most religions preach that God is a God of love, compassion, and understanding, it's sometimes amazing to look at what has been done and what continues to be done in the name of God. I've studied spiritual traditions for more than 30 years. I very much believe that spiritual development is the highest and most important form of development that a person can pursue. Rightly understood, spiritual development is the key to peace, prosperity, happiness, and personal fulfillment. About 325 BC, the philosopher Aristotle wrote his Nicomachean Ethics, one of history's finest explanations of the human condition. He begins with the observation that the common denominator of mankind is the desire to be happy. He concludes that the question of how to achieve this happiness is the fundamental question of philosophy. In 1895, Sigmund Freud of Vienna introduced his theory of psychoanalysis. His fundamental conclusion followed directly from Aristotle more than 3,000 years before. He called it the pleasure principle. Freud taught that human beings are motivated to move toward pleasure and to avoid pain, to move toward comfort and away from discomfort, whether it's physical, emotional, financial, or of any other kind. Modern economists and psychologists agree that every human action is stimulated by a felt dissatisfaction of some kind. Without this felt dissatisfaction, no action takes place. The individual remains content and satisfied. The primary driving forces of human behavior begin with discontent, dissatisfaction, discomfort, or unhappiness of some kind. Action takes place when the individual perceives a better state or condition where this unhappiness or discontent can be relieved. The individual then acts to achieve this goal. 
The action is either successful or unsuccessful, but all human behavior from the beginning of man to today is aimed at achieving a higher level of happiness than the one that currently exists. The highest human good is, and always has been, peace of mind. In fact, you can measure the success of your life at any given time by your level of happiness and peace of mind, by how good you feel about yourself and your world. Peace of mind is only possible when you feel completely satisfied and content inside. Peace of mind comes when you follow your intuition, your inner voice, and you do and say the things that feel exactly right for you. Now, no one can determine what will make another person happy because each person is unique. Each person has different needs and desires and is motivated by different goals and results. Each of us can only decide for ourselves what makes us happy personally. And each of us can only decide what makes us happy by listening to our inner voice and then by following its guidance and direction. In spiritual development, there are a series of simple principles that all religious traditions seem to have in common. The first principle is that there is a God who loves us, who knows us, who understands us, and who wants the very best for us. Some people refer to this as the God mind, the oversoul, universal intelligence, or the creative power. It doesn't really matter what it's called, even if it's just called nature. It is a comforting thought, though, to believe and accept that there is a great power in the universe that we can turn to, that desires our good, and that will guide us to always doing and saying the right things if we will, but listen to the voice within us. Intuition is one of the greatest gifts of mankind. Every great thinker has been amazed at this wonderful power, and the more you listen to your intuition, the better and the more accurate it becomes. The more you listen to your inner voice, the louder and clearer it becomes in guiding you to make the right decisions in each area of your life. One of the great spiritual practices is that of solitude and contemplation. Most people have never tried the practice of solitude in their entire lives. Yet, it is an extraordinarily positive experience. The French writer Blaise Pascal wrote, Almost all the problems of mankind arise from the inability to be alone with oneself in a room for any period of time. If ever you desire an answer to any question in your life, a solution to any dilemma, the resolution to any difficulty, practice solitude. Go and sit quietly by yourself with no noise or distractions for 60 minutes. It's been said that men and women begin to become great when they begin to spend time alone with themselves, listening to their inner voices. During this period of solitude, your mind will clear like silt clears in a bucket of muddy water. After about 30 minutes of quiet contemplation, you will feel calm and relaxed. You will feel happy and peaceful. You will feel at one with the universe. And then, at a certain moment as you sit there, ideas and insights will begin to flow through your mind. Whatever your current situation or dilemma, the right answer for you will come to you at exactly the right time, in exactly the right form. When you arise from your period of solitude and take action on that answer, you will find that it is exactly the right thing for you to do. This is the height of spiritual perception and spiritual connection. The second principle that all the spiritual traditions have in common is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Someone once wrote that there may be a better principle for human living than the golden rule, but no one has yet discovered it. The great truths of life are simple. It's amazing how many problems, both personal and social, that could be resolved if everyone decided to treat other people the way they would like to be treated. Listen to people the way you would like to be listened to. Sell your products and services the way you would like others to sell their products and services to you. Be courteous and respectful to other people the same way you would like them to be courteous and respectful to you. Be patient and understanding with people when they make mistakes the same way you would like them to be patient and understanding with you when you make mistakes. The third principle common to all religious traditions was best articulated by Immanuel Kant, the Dutch philosopher. He called it the universal maxim. He said, live your life as though your every act were to become a universal law. This is an amazing idea. Imagine if everyone lived and behaved as if everyone else was going to do exactly what he or she did. Imagine that everyone was going to treat everybody else exactly the way you treat them. 
This universal maxim is a tremendous discipline and guide for individual behavior. It harms no one and it helps everyone. It requires perfect truthfulness, honesty and justice. The universal maxim requires that we treat everyone alike. Living by the universal maxim requires the utmost of spiritual and personal discipline from ourselves. Here are four questions that you can ask and answer for yourself on a regular basis. They help you to incorporate the universal maxim into your life. The first question is, what kind of a world would my world be if everyone in it were just like me? Most of the problems in the world today could be solved if everyone could say that this would be a better world if everyone behaved as they do. The second question is, what kind of a country would my country be if everyone in it were just like me? Most of our social and political problems are a direct result of the refusal of people to ask this question about themselves, about others, and about our country. The third question is, what kind of a company would my company be if everyone in it was just like me? This is one of the best questions for creating a terrific place to work. The more people there are in a company who can answer this question positively, the better company it becomes in every way. The final question is this. What kind of a family would my family be if everyone in it was just like me? Imagine if everyone in your family treated everyone else in your family the way you treat everyone else in your family. What kind of a family would it be? When a book proposal is accepted by the publisher but the final manuscript has not yet been submitted, it is called a work in progress. In the same sense, each one of us is a work in progress. Each of us has a long way to go. Each of us has ample room for improvement. There are many things that each of us can do to become better human beings and better members of our societies. Asking ourselves these four questions regularly gives us guidance and insights into the specific changes and improvements we can make in ourselves. What are your values with regard to spiritual development? Do you believe in the values of peace, joy, love, compassion? forgiveness, self-control, faith, and happiness and personal fulfillment. Select the values that you consider to be the most important. Organize your values by priority from what is more important all the way through to what is least important. Put an X on your most important value and then begin to think about how you could express this value more often in your words and actions. Discipline yourself to live in harmony with your most important spiritual value. Whenever you slip, catch yourself and begin living and behaving by this value. Once again, in time, you will program this value into your subconscious mind. You will instill this value as a permanent part of your personality. You will actually transform your own character. You will become a finer and better person in every sense of the word. Now what is your vision for yourself and your life if you had complete peace of mind? Your inner life was perfect in every way and you were completely happy and fulfilled, how would you be living your life? Think back over the happiest moments of your life. Think about the times when you felt the greatest joy and inner peace. What was going on at that time? Who were you with? What were you doing? What have been your most joyous experiences in life? What could you do to create a situation where you could enjoy more of those happy experiences in the year ahead. What should your focal point be? What one change or decision could you make that would move you more rapidly to a higher level of spiritual and inner development toward a higher level of happiness and peace? Practice zero-based thinking. Look at your life and ask yourself if there is anything that you are doing that knowing what you now know you wouldn't get into again today. Is there any relationship, personal or business, that you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do it over? Is there any part of your business, any product or service or process or activity that you wouldn't start up again today knowing what you now know? Is there any investment or drain on your time, your emotion or your energy or money that you would not get into again today if you had to do it over knowing what you now know? Sometimes the decision to stop doing something that is no longer a source of joy or happiness in your life can bring you more peace and satisfaction than anything else. And you always know what it is. The only question is whether or not you have the courage and character to take the action that you know you need to take 
What are your goals for spiritual and inner development? What specific measurable steps can you take to achieve higher levels of happiness and personal satisfaction? What can you do today to eliminate the people, forces, and influences in your life that are disrupting your happiness and peace of mind? Remember that there are only four ways to bring about the changes you desire. You can do more of some things or you can do less of others. You can start doing something or you can stop doing something else altogether. Which is it to be next? What habits and behaviors do you need to develop to become a happier person and to enjoy greater peace of mind in everything you do? Many people develop the habit of reading spiritually each morning and thinking about how they can practice what they read during the day. Others develop the habit of daily solitude. Some develop the habit of attending a church that they enjoy on a regular basis. One spiritual habit is to donate your time to working with people who are less fortunate than you are. Spending time with other spiritually developed people is another great habit that helps you to develop spiritually as well. The daily activities that you could begin practicing to increase your levels of spiritual development and inner peace. Whatever you do, anything that you repeat over and over again will eventually become a new habit. What are the specific activities that you would like to develop into habits? Finally, make a specific action commitment. Decide upon one step that you are going to take today to begin moving toward higher levels of spiritual development and peace of mind. Either get in or get out. Either start doing something or stop doing something else. Make a decision of some kind and then take action on your decision. Determine your focal point. Put an X on the one decision or activity that can have the most immediate positive impact on your level of personal happiness and inner joy. Whatever it is, just do it. Perhaps the most important spiritual principle of all is for you to develop an unshakable trust in the universe and in goodness of God or of a higher power. Look for the good in every situation. Look for something beneficial that you can gain from every setback or difficulty. Have complete confidence and faith that everything that is happening to you is happening for a good reason. However, it appears at the moment the reason is usually to help you to be more successful and happy in the future. Norman Vincent Peale used to say, when God wants to send you a gift, he wraps it up in a problem. The bigger the gift that God wants to send you, the bigger the problem he wraps it up in. In hundreds of interviews for the most successful men and women of the age, the researchers found that they all had a single thinking quality in common. They all believed that within every difficulty and problem they faced, there was something good or helpful that they could benefit from. Look for the valuable lesson in every difficulty. Have complete faith that there is a divine intelligence that cares about you and which is guiding your path every step of the way. When you begin practicing this way of thinking, you'll be amazed at the wonderful things that will happen in your life. One of the great spiritual principles is for you to identify the biggest single problem in your life today. What is it? Then look into that problem and imagine that it has been sent to you at this moment to teach you something that you need to know. Imagine that this problem has been artfully constructed to contain one or more valuable lessons that you absolutely need to learn to move to the next level of success and happiness in your life. All great men and women are men and women of faith. They have complete confidence that everything is unfolding for their good, even if they cannot see it at the moment. They believe that every setback has a benefit or opportunity hidden within it. They have complete faith that everything is happening as it should, and that in the end, everything will turn out well, and they are seldom disappointed. Spiritual development and peace of mind are the highest of all human goods and benefits. Spiritual development enhances your life and fills you with joy and satisfaction. It makes you happy. It gives you tremendous pleasure. Best of all, it is available to you and to everyone at no cost. Developing spiritually and enjoying peace of mind simply requires that you live in truth with yourself and with everyone around you. Spiritual development requires that you trust in the universe to guide and direct your path. Spiritual development requires that you take time each day to sit quietly by yourself and to listen for the still small voice within. 
Spiritual development requires that you follow the guidance of your intuition and believe absolutely that everything is working out for the best. When you begin to live in truth with yourself and others and trust your inner voice, you will probably never make another mistake. You will make your life into something truly wonderful and inspiring. And it's completely up to you. Now let's wrap up with seven rules for success in the 21st century. These are some of the most important ideas I have learned in more than 30 years of studying successful people. Rule number one. Your life only gets better when you get better. Your outer world will always be a reflection of your inner world. If you want to improve the quality of your outer world, you must go to work on yourself. And since there's no limit on how much better you can get, there's no limit to how much better you can make your life. Rule number two for the 21st century, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. Never allow yourself to be slowed down or held back by events that have occurred in your past. Learn from them and let them go. Resolve to keep yourself focused on the future and where you're going most of the time. And since your future is only limited by your imagination, there are no limits to what you can achieve in the months and years ahead. Rule number three. Anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. Remember, everything is hard before it's easy. A primary reason that people do not realize their full potentials is that they try something new and when it doesn't work perfectly the first time, they quit and go back to their old lower level of performance. Anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first and it's often worth doing poorly several times until you master it. Rule number four. You are only as free as your options. The well-developed alternatives you have available to you. One of the greatest human goods is personal freedom and your freedom is largely determined by your choices. The more options you have, the greater freedom and self-confidence you have. You should be continually developing new options throughout your career. Never hang all of your hopes for success on a single possibility. Rule number five. Within every problem or difficulty you experience, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. Look for the good in every problem. Look for the valuable lesson in every adversity or setback. Look for something that you can gain from every difficulty and you will always find it. Rule number six. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. You are designed by nature to be a learning organism. Anything that anyone else has learned. Within reason, you can learn as well. You can acquire any kind of knowledge and develop any skill that you need to rise to the top of your field. And finally, rule number seven. The only real limits on what you can do or be are the limits you accept in your own mind. As Shakespeare said, nothing is but thinking makes it so. Henry Ford said, if you believe you can do a thing or you believe you cannot, in either case, you're probably right. You have within you right now all the talents and abilities you could ever want or need to achieve any goal or dream you can set for yourself. The only question you ever have to ask is, how badly do you want it? If you want anything badly enough and you're willing to persist long enough, nothing can stop you from eventually achieving it. Good luck. If you enjoyed this program for Master Motivator and Success Coach Brian Tracy, you are probably the type of high achiever that would benefit from Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program. This one on one coaching program is unlike any self-development tool ever offer. Imagine spending 12 weeks with your own coach who has been personally trained by Brian Tracy. Your coach will aid you in building your life strategies, guiding you as you take action steps toward making your greatest desires a reality. If you are like many, you often set goals that sometimes lack the motivation to carry them through. With the ongoing nurturing and guidance of your personal coach and this outstanding program, you will be accountable for the changes you want to make in your life and you'll soon see those changes becoming a reality. Created exclusively for Nightingale Connect by Brian Tracy, this program has had massive life-changing results on those who have committed themselves to it. It consists of a minimum of 12 weeks of 30-minute one-on-one telecoaching sessions with a trained personal coach. Accompanying the program are 12 cassette tapes, one for each week of study, along with a guidebook. This extraordinary program focuses on every aspect of your life, 
and helps integrate and balance your life success skills along with your business growth. Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program offers you guidance in the areas of strategic planning, intelligence, health and fitness, power, career success, time management, financial planning, life success, relationships, goal setting, leadership, and building character. Your life will magically transform as you turn your conceptualized thoughts into active steps toward achieving your goals. Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program is one of the most comprehensive, powerful self-development programs to date and is designed to fit your goals, dreams, and desires both personally and professionally. Act now today and call in to receive further information in your free personal success profile with one of our trained personal development representatives. Designed with Brian Tracy, this profile will identify your strengths and pinpoint your growth opportunities. We offer this analysis to you at no cost and no obligation. So don't delay. To register for this outstanding coaching program or to receive your free personal success profile, call Nightingale Connett now at this number. 1-877-297-9799. That's 1-877-297-9799. And ask for Brian Tracy's personal success coaching profile. It's one phone call that could change your life.